appreciate you for taking the time out to do this, man. You've done so many hits, and we just wanted to highlight a couple. Oh, man, appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So, I mean, What's good? we got we to gotta start off talking about your album, City Limits. This is the one that some people might know, some people might not know, but that was such a gem of an album. Just take me back to Mike City as a young singer, songwriter, producer, and what you remember during that era. Just having fun and just trying to do me, man. Like, not really abiding by any rules in particular. Yeah. Just um, just doing me. Like, like you said, I was really early on the rapping and singing. A lot of people don't yeah. know that. I was yeah. early, early. But I knew I was going to get to that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, just having fun. I got to spend a lot of time in Miami doing yeah. the um, album down there with my dog Slice. So, it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you talk about knowing that this singing and rapping thing would take off at some point like what were what influenced you to go that route to begin with uh i don't know i i, I love hip-hop and mm. i love you know all different types of music and everything like really when i started really 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 getting into producing i wasn't even really really on r&b like that i was like i'm just gonna do okay. like rap beats hip-hop beats and everything oh so wow that's what i was really on yeah that's crazy so let's fast forward a little bit. Oh, man, I gotta ask you. Going now. Yeah, no, I was just saying, my yeah. man, I was down in Miami with doing my project with. Oh, <clears> that's yeah, cool. So I mean, we gotta talk about all these hits that you've created for R and B, and I mean, I gotta start off with the Sunshine Anderson album. You discovered her. You put that whole thing together. Heard it all before. Classic song, lunch and lunch and dinner. Another great song. Just talk about creating that body of work, because to me, like. That album, from top to bottom, it was such a cohesive project. Well, me and Sunshine, we go back, you know, we went to college. I mean, I was I was kind of leaving, and she was coming in. Yep. And um, I think one of my, my guys in choir, his name is Wallace. He definitely was one of my guys in choir. He was like, you got to hear this girl Sunshine sing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ah, whatever, dude. So he, he kept telling me. <laughs> so I was like, well, let me meet her. <clears throat> and right. then, um, so when I went and met her, I was like, what's up? You got a cool vibe and everything. So we were just sitting there talking. And I was like, um, let me hear you, um, let me hear you um do something. Yeah. I said, do the um I said, sing um Baby Don't Cry by Layla Hathaway. Mm. And when she sung that joint, it was a rap. I was like, Oh yeah, we gotta get it in. So that was yeah. I, I knew right then, like that she had what it took. Yeah. Yeah. Man. And heard it all before, one of the classics that you've done. Just take me to that song, because that to this day is like an anthem for females and people still love it to this day. Just take me from your perspective, because you wrote that song, you produced it. Like what kind of a zone were you in for that song? Well, the crazy, the crazy part about it is once again, my man Slice reminded me that I even had to beat and everything. So I just <laughs> have, yeah, I just, just beach laying around. And then um, I was playing it and she was like, we had started working on her album and she was like, city, I want that beat. I want that beat. Mm. And I was like, cool. So really the crazy part about Heard It All Before, it was so easy to write. Like it was me, her, and um and Pinky, shout out to Pinky. Um I wrote it. Okay. Because the whole the song was really it was like true. Like I knew the yep. dude. So it was like mm. it was easy. Like it was really true. Right. Like she had to even <laughs> laugh. It was like, wow, because I knew the dude. Right. So we just wrapped the words around and everything and and you know, a lot of times in, in people albums, those type of songs come late. Yeah. But that was like the second or third song we did. We we knew wow. we had that already. That was wow. way in the can. And mind you, I did that record uh, way before Carl song came out. Mm. Okay. It was crazy. <clears throat> wow. I mean, just talk about that project in terms of you know, it's easy to go into the studio with a superstar and create a hit for them. They already have a catalog. It's just adding on. But for you to break Sunshine Anderson's career like that with that record, like that's something special, isn't it? It's, it's, it's special because we go back. Like yeah. we basically was working since like her freshman year in college. Yeah. So we was we going to do this and we're going to do that and everything. So it was so special. Like when we were able, finally able to give her a call, like, yo, we go, let's go to L.A., <clears throat> and we're going to do this thing and everything. So it was like, she's like, you serious? Because, you know, it's been a lot of false starts and everything. But that's yeah. how the music industry goes. So it's just crazy how everything goes down, man. It's like, I remember 
one time I went to the uh I went to I was going to a show with her and yeah. Leela James. We was all together <clears throat> and um it was crazy because they didn't man, whatever happened, they didn't have my tickets at the door. So I was <laughs> mad as I don't know what. Now mind you, it was Carl and Dave headlining the show. Wow. Neither one of the managers had my tickets at the door. Wow. So, and I'm with Sunshine and Leela James. So I think we left there and went and got something to eat. And I was like, it's all good. I was like, you know, it's crazy because like a month or two later, everybody knew who Sunshine was. And then like um, like a year later, everybody knew who Leela was. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah. it's just crazy how everything works out. Right. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. That's crazy. Yeah, and Sunshine, you worked on a couple more projects with her. Just talk about yep. that chemistry with Sunshine. She, we just get each other. It's just, it's just, yeah. we just get it. You know what I'm saying? I can't even describe it. It's like, we just get it. And, amazing. Uh, and, her, and her voice is just so different and it's so painful, but lovely at the same time. Mm -hmm. So, so let's talk about a couple of other records you did here: <laughs> the Carl Thomas record, "I Wish," and. Mike, I got to tell you, this record, as well as I want to say Donnell Jones, Where I Want to Be, these are two of the most creative R&B records that I've heard from a male perspective. Just like no one was talking about these subject matters. Just talk about I Wish and how that all came about. Man, I Wish is a true story, too. Wow. I really, I need to find her and, I, and, and buy her <laughs> a real nice dinner. And it's crazy because... You know, I, I used to live in North Carolina and everything, so I had to go yeah. back and um and vote one time. So I remember when I was going back to vote, I saw her from a distance and I didn't know it was her. I was about to get <laughs> at her again on everything wow. I love. I was about to get at her again. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't I didn't even know. But no, it's it's a it's a true story and everything, and it just came together. And um like it's crazy how energy worked because um I grew up with my man Tough from Channel Live. So him and Hakeem, they was all down with Carl and everything. And he was like, Carl looking for some joints and everything. Because that was like going to be my record. I, I wasn't even thinking about shopping the record. He was like, yo, let me send the joints and everything. So Carl loved it. And um, so we went and sat down. You know, we were supposed to go meet with, um, I think, puffing them up at um, Daddy's house. And it's crazy because mm -hmm. I was up there working with um, Rough Riders and Yonkers at the moment with my boy A.G. Wow. Thomas. Wow. <clears throat> so me, A.G., and my man, and his man, Raj, we went to daddy's house to have the meeting and everything. And I think, I don't know if Puff got mad or whatever it is. I think Raj had on a Rough Riders shirt. And that might have been when um the whole Locks and Puff thing was going crazy. Mm -hmm. But long yeah. story short, he kicked us out the studio. Mm. We, got, we got kicked out. That's what happened. Like, and a week later, they called me back. Tough came and got me from up in Yonkers. I met him in the Bronx somewhere. And the next thing you know, I went from getting kicked out of daddy's house to being <laughs> like up in, in um sound on sound, electric lady and hit factory. Wow. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Yep. I mean I mean, Mike, talk about this. You know, you have the Sunshine record, you have the Carl <laughs> record, both are hit records for newer artists at that time. Like what kind of doors did that open up for you as a producer? It opened up a lot of doors and everything, but I think, you know, it's like you gotta be ready for it. You know what I'm saying? And, and you just, you, you got to stay grounded. You can't be overwhelmed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You got to be ready. So when the time came, I was ready. I was like, let's go. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it, it really opened up a lot of doors and everything. And then um, I guess, yeah, after 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 Carl, yeah. Dave Hollister, me and Dave worked and everything. And that was great. <clears throat> Jimmy um, Cozier, it was, it was all fun. And then yeah. I, then... Then I started working with Brandy, and I actually met a lot of people through Brandy because she knows wow. everyone. You know what I'm saying? So it just started moving around, just how you move different and everything. It's just fun. Yeah. I mean, the work that you did on that Dave Hollister album, like, that's still amazing to this day. Like, just talk about the process behind that one. Dave is a beast. It's just, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, he's just a, he's the beast. Like, he's one of those singers. When you hear him sing, you be like, Lord, like, it's yep. crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just a beast. It's yeah. just so when we got together, we did um we did um I think we did keep baby keep on loving me. We did that first. Yeah. And then we did um 
And then the crazy part about it is, he might have said it before, Dave didn't even want to do one with my man. Wow. <laughs> he didn't want to do it. <laughs> like, I never demoed the song. We was just sitting up at, um, and um, I think I sang it to him, and he liked it, but, you know, he didn't want to sing it. Mm. And, um, and then Gerald Busby came through, you know, it was DreamWorks, and I sang it to him. And he was like, uh, all right, Dave, I need you to do this song, baby. He said, all right, not only are we going to do this song, it's going to be the first single. This is before we even cut one verse. So wow. it, was, it was, it was. so Dave was like, all right, let's do it and everything. So when we went in the studio and cut and everything, I said, Dave, we're going to smooth it all the way out. So I don't know what he had in the glass or whatever it is. We're going to smooth it all the way out. So he was sitting down. He was sitting down in the booth, just sitting down with something in the glass. I said, we're going to take this like we in the lounge. Like we're going <laughs> to like we in the smooth lounge somewhere. So he was like, you know, it's so funny running into it. We had the whole mode. Like we had to set it all off and everything. Wow. <laughs> yep. That's amazing because, like, I, I just tweeted this the other day, actually. I feel like Dave Hollister, we know he's a vocal monster, but yeah. in some aspects, he's underrated. Like, people don't appreciate that talent. Like, for him to be able to do so many different styles, it's amazing. Well, the crazy part, the, the, the funny thing about with people like Dave, Carl, different people, yeah. like, like, half the time in the studio, we messing around because when it comes time to really cutting the record, we yeah. cut the record in, like, two hours. Hour, wow. hour, hour. It just people just great. Like one time, I gotta say, like one time, me and Tank had did a joint. It never came out, but Tank came on, did the record in an hour, mm. and it was right. Like wow. literally, <laughs> and then he had to go catch a flight. Like, but it was right though. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I remember when I when I did um when I did Love It with Bilal, yeah. he chewed gum the whole time. <laughs> wow, like, what are you doing? But that was on the record. He, you know what I'm saying? He, he was chewing gum the whole time. And I think um, Jimmy IV came in there laughing. I was like, well, we got what we got. You know what I'm saying? But after he did that session, I think he took a flight and went to Paris or something. Wow. Crazy. <laughs> I mean, Mike, talk about this. You're, you're mentioning all these great singers that can do it quick. They can get in the booth, get what you need, and, and they're out of there. You've also worked with some newer artists that might not get it right away that where you have to sit with them and really coach them like that I think takes a lot of patience like just take me through that process. Has it been tough to work with artists that take a long time or are you understanding of the whole process? It depends because I kind of know what the talent level is going yeah. in, so you kind of gotta you know you know how hard you can push someone and you yeah. know how hard you can't push someone and I'll be honest with you, there's been certain situations on um even major labels where yeah. <clears throat> I had to really stop and I and I basically told I basically told the uh, the label or the A and R person like honestly I'm like keeping the buck I don't know how y'all how they, this person is signed. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Because we can't work miracles like that. Mm -hmm. You know? You know what I mean? Wow. So it's like you know, you, you want to work with people and have fun doing and everything, you know, but yeah. I do, I did kind of get spoiled because, I mean, I just grew up, you know, around great singers too, but once you really get in the game and all the greatness and everything, you're dealing with top echelon singers, like really great singers, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> just even before I really started doing records, like, I was working with people like, are, are you familiar with, like, Crystal Johnson? Yeah. From uptown, like that's a friend of mine, but like yeah. even with her, like these people, you gotta be on your P's and Q's. Cause yeah. if you ain't right, they gonna look at you sideways. They they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> like these singers know what they're doing, like, and you gotta be able to communicate with them and speak the same language. And you don't even have to be a great singer, but you gotta know what you're doing, and they gotta have a belief in you that you know what you're doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I was work like I was working Kelly Price one time. And we yep. was working on the song, and um, and I went and walked somebody out to the car. I came back. Um, hey, die. <laughs> Look, I, that's die from um Jade. I came, I came back, and she was um, basically done the done the record. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I'm looking at Kelly. I'm like, yo, you are you a beast? But she is a beast though. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? So it's like I get along with those singers. I understand them. I know what that is. And yeah. I know who I know who a beast is within five or ten seconds too. Wow. I, I don't even have to I know I know what I know. 
So, Mike, let me ask you this then. You worked with JoJo on her first album, and she was like 12 years Beast. old at the time. Beast, Beast right away? Wow. Beast. Beast level immediately. Wow. I need to get back with JoJo, too. <laughs> think, no, I'm serious, though. Yeah. Beast level beast level immediately. Yeah. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, because you were with Chris Brown well. before. Did you know that? Yep. Early the on. Song, yep. They took the song off at the last minute, but I'm yep. sure that I'm one of the first people who told Chris Brown that I, I said, I know you can write. I know you got something in you because you got something to say. Mm -hmm. I was like, you you from Virginia. I know you got something to say. And then we did <laughs> and we and we no, we and we did this joint called you. Yeah. We did another joint too, but we did this joint called you. And I was cause I was like, just his whole energy, I was like, I know you got something to say. Come on. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But um wow. that was fun. Yeah. And then speaking of vocal beast, your work with Brandy, and I gotta say, I mean, we can talk about Full Moon till till the end of this, but I mean, just the work that you did with her and do with her from Full Moon to a lot of the other records, music being one, Open being another, like, obviously she has that chemistry with Rodney, she has that chemistry with Timbaland, but I feel like your chemistry with her, like, that that needs to be a conversation, too. I mean, just talk about, I guess, first the Full Moon session, because you were using her voice in a way that I've never heard. Like, you were using it like an instrument, pretty much. Yeah, she had a lot to do with that, too, though. You can't, like, I mean, we that's just our energy together, man. We just got to know each other real good, man. It's like yeah. she she used to come um pick me up. This this is when I knew she was really a really a star, right? Because I used mm -hmm. to live in Beverly Hills and, and she came and picked me up one time and I used to live across the street from this elementary school. And this was right after Moesha um probably went off. So she came in she came in the G Wagon to pick me up. I promise you all the kids across the street knew it was her. And she had to leave and drive off and, and, and came back and um picked me up like 20 minutes later. And I looked at her, I was like, yeah, you really a, you really a star, huh? I was like, I was like, yo, you really a star, huh? And it was crazy. But no, nah, it's like, and then we went to the where we go, we went to the Louis Vuitton store, and that's when I knew yeah. she was a star. And she was wow. like, put this on my tab. I was like, ah, you gonna do it like that? We was in there <laughs> like five minutes, and I was like, wow, you gonna do it like that? But no, it, it was fun, man. Like, I, I, Brandy introduced me to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? Like, Whitney. Um, mm -hmm. Just just over a house, just, just people flowing through. Just fun times. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, take me through that process with her and building on Full Moon, getting to open like it was yesterday music. Like, I feel like that continuation and just continuing to elevate your sound and progressing her vocals. Like, just talk about just that body of work. Well, I mean, both of us nuts in our own way. You know what I'm saying? So it's our yeah. energy together. And um, no, like, in the studio, like, and I think my man, um, you should be my engineer, Biz, is on here. You know, we be going at, like, brothers and sisters. But that's how our energy, like, we ah, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but it's all love because she know, she know what I feel about and I think about it. And, and, and she's just, she's just ridiculous. And she's gonna make sure I do my best and she do her best. You know what I'm saying? So out of that sequence, I wanna say, I think we did open first. Okay. We did we did open first. And they wound up, they probably should have kept it for the album, but they put it on Osmosis Jones, right? Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people really love um the open joint. And yeah. then um, we was doing different joints and everything. And um I was talking, I think because like Big John Platt was adding on that project. Right. And he was like, City, do or something happy. You know what I'm saying? And so, so I remember one time I was in the record plant and um, I just started coming up with full ones. Mm -hmm. I just started like bugging out. <laughs> and yeah. I think she, um, whatever, she came in and she looked at me. She was like, whatever was going on, she looked at me like it was one of those looks like, oh, what is that? And I said, I'm just getting it going right now, right? So I think oh. she went to the Beverly Center or something and um, she came back. She came back, um, and I had the hook done. I was like, dun, 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 dun. I was like so we laid the hook right then. But I right. promise you, it took me two weeks to write Full Moon. And I and that's kind of the only thing I did for two weeks. Wow. Like, literally, it took me um, two weeks to write Full Moon. Literally. How long, did, how long does it normally take you to write a record? Is, is two weeks considered Not long? Not two weeks. I mean, right. like, literally, that's, that was on my mind 
for two weeks. Yeah. Wow. So it kind of prohibited me from doing, I might have was dabbling with some beats, but really like for two weeks. Yeah. And she would call me, you done? You done? <laughs> nah, B, nah. You done? Like, nah. It was like, I was working on it for two weeks because I knew I had to get it right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was like, I had to get it right and everything. And um, so once we got it right, it was right. And it was like, right. it was right. But even after that, they was trying to take Full Moon off the album if I'm keeping it mm -hmm. a buck. Yeah. And she named the album Full Moon basically out of spite. Wow. <laughs> True story. Wow. Well, I mean, I mean, just think about it. Full Moon, an album everyone considers a classic to this day. Rodney does the majority of it. Rodney did a great job on it. But you have the album title and you have arguably the biggest song on the album. That's amazing. Man, it's just, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's a blessing, man. It's amazing. But Rodney did they think, you know, Burton, everybody. And, like, my favorite joint on there is, like, the joint Harold and, um, and, and Baby Dub warned that he is. I love he is. Yep. Yeah, that's a great song, too. It's just, you know, it's like, it's crazy. Yep. Amazing. Yeah. So, Mike, let's talk about, and I'm going to say, this is my favorite Mike City joint right here. And uh, I don't know who's heard it, who hasn't, but the Donnell Jones record, Spend the Night, dude. And we did it right here, literally. That right song is amazing. Yep. That song is incredible. Spend the night, spend the night. Oh, and girl. Yup, that was crazy. Because I remember, yeah. um, I remember um, when I did it, um, Dre had just slid me some drums. And I was mm -hmm. like, I'm going to use these joints for this Donnell joint. Yep. Shout out to Dr. Dre. Yeah, he had just slid me some drums. And I was like, I'm going to use them on this Donnell joint. Yeah. And that's why I just had it leaning like that. We was like, we're going to lean it like that. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy. But um, it's but like Spin the Night wasn't even really a single. Had it really been a single, it would have jumped off. Yep, I agree. It would have jumped I off. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And then <laughs> fast forward a little bit with Donnell. You have the other song. And you did, did this one as well, The Finer Things in Life. That's another, man. Just the groove on that song, amazing. Yeah, I just try to, you know, I try to get it come with the bounce and the and the feel good, man. Like, like a lot of that stuff. And the thing about it is, there's not really no time limit on when when you're done because people don't yeah. know when I did um, the finding things in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I used to use an ASR ten all the time. Now I use Logic, but I've done some stuff on. Um, Logic that people thought I did in the ASR 10. It's how you, mm. it's how, it's your movement, how you do it. Right. You know what That's I'm saying? Amazing. Like, <clears throat> yeah. And then we got to talk about, because I feel like when I listen to a Mike City record, it always has such a nice groove to it. And the work that you did on El Debarge album in 2009, like that was the perfect example of that, the record with Faith. I mean, just talk about those that sessions. Was, that was, that was fun. That was fun. Um, I did that, um, um, Erica, what is her, she'll kill me, Erica, oh man, oh, she gonna kill me, that means I need to see her, but she's a, um, I think she's an A&R epic now, but, um, she wrote that song. Okay. And, um, and we was just sitting here, and, and we actually, um, we wrote it for Elder Boys in mind, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Erica Coulter, my bad, yeah, Erica Coulter, forgive me, E, thanks, LP, yeah, Erica Coulter. <laughs> But yeah, she wrote that joint. She wrote a hell of a record too, and um, and we had we had it with that in mind and everything, with L in mind. And I I was already rocking with L, doing some stuff and everything. Yep. And I was like, L, you gotta remember, you Elder Barge, baby, you Elder Barge. You know right. what I'm saying? So I said when when I was coming up, it was like Michael Jackson, Prince, and Elder Barge. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like you you from the Barge. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So. I had to give L that pep talk, but he's a he's a beast, man. L's a problem. And then you know, yeah. Faith, that, that's the homie and everything. So mm -hmm. when she got on it and blessed it, it was just all love and everything. It was fun. Yeah. I mean, working with someone like Elder Barge, clearly a legend, has had a great body of work. Even before you come into the picture, like what's your process to give them give him something that's familiar to him, but also give him something that's new and fresh? Because I think you did it with the records on this album. Well, it's just with Elder Bars, I was just trying to reach for get some, some chords that I thought would make him feel good about wanting to get in and doing something, everything, just from being a fan and a student of the Barge. 
You know what I'm saying? So mm. it was just that and everything. We just vibing out, and it was all fun, all love. It really was. Right. That's amazing. Yeah, so let's fast forward a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> after that album, I kind of look at it as like the downturn for R&B in terms of popularity on the radio. Labels aren't really messing with R&B like, like they used to. The money's not what it used to be. Like, just take me through that era as a producer. Like, was that tough? It's always tough when you when you when the labels don't want to get behind something. But the crazy part about it is, you got to cycle through that and basically yeah. create your own content. Mm. So I started creating my own stuff and everything. You know what I mean? Like, um, and now a lot of stuff is like whether labels want to do it or not. Yeah. TV and film love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you got to do what you got to do and everything. Like. Everything doesn't have to be trap. I love trap mm -hmm. music. I do trap yeah. joints. I do. I can do some Bay Area joints. I mean, my first place, my first major placement actually was on a Bay Area rapper. Uh, what's my man name? Um, oh, man, I'm tripping out. <laughs> what's my man name? Um, the Players Club. What's, what? He had a joint. Oh, man, let me take a look for you right now. What is his name? He'll kill oh. me. <laughs> From Frisco. I didn't do that record, but um, I, I had his first um joint called Money Make the Man off of, a, it was on Virgin. That was my first major label placement. Mm. I got to look it up now, because now I'm tripping. <laughs> Someone in the comments, help us out here. <laughs> What's my man name? Hold on. Rapping Forte. Yeah. Thank you. Cause I'm about to look it up, yeah. Fote. So that was my first major label placement as a producer. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. So, Mike, let's fast forward now to today. I gotta say, your SoundCloud is like one of our one of our favorite things to look at. Just the amount of music that you upload on there, just to remind <laughs> people of what you've done and also what you've been doing now. Like, just take talk talk to me about that body of work and some of your solo music too. Well, yeah, my whole thing is right now like. I'm on a mission. I'm just going to create as much fly content as possible. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's just what it is. Like, uh, and when everybody really ready to get back to the get back to, I ain't hard to find. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm not. Amazing. So, you know Mike, I mean? who, are you, who, who are you working on right now? I, you're, you're always in the studio. You're always making music. Is there anything that we can look forward to? Well, yeah, I know. Me, me and Carl got to get back. We got to get back and do what we do. We, mm -hmm. Me and Carl have been talking. And me and Dave had talked, too. I'm always partial to um, people I came up with and everything. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we got to, we kind of help push this whole new thing forward and everything. Yeah. So I'm definitely, you know, doing that and everything. I'm My door is always open for, for that. Um, I got a project coming out with um my man Booker T in London. It's wow. like a soulful house project. It's called um, um, Made in Quarantine. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm doing instrumental albums. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm I'm pushing that, uh, like, from the vault. I got another instrumental project, Quarantine Vibes. I'm just right. always working. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, I want to let my body of work speak for itself. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, and I ain't for everybody, and I'm cool with that. Right. No, I mean, I mean, you've, you've done an amazing job up until this point. You have some <laughs> classics under your belt. So, I mean, I can't really complain. And then, Mike, we're almost out of time here, but I got to okay. ask you. Um, you worked on the Usher 8701 album, and that I song, sure that, that album sold a lot of al albums. I'll Maybe be not a at session. you, yeah. turning brothers <laughs> down. Song after song, but it's time uh, for me to holler. Yeah, I should kill that. Yeah, I mean, just talk about that era and, and, and watching Usher turn into a superstar after that. No, he was a superstar before that. Like, he, he, yeah. um, that, that was, uh, which one was that? That was 8701. He was already, he was already in pocket. I just yeah. came and rolled the wave. I am mad at him that I wasn't on Confessions, though, because I was supposed to be, I was supposed to be on Confessions. Wow. There's a record? 
yeah, we had other records we did it, but actually when the time we was supposed to I was supposed to be on confession, we never got in the studio. It was he was so uh -huh. busy running around, that's when he yeah. was really he was really ushering it. He was really in these streets usher. I was like, slow down, baby, let me you know what I mean? So <laughs> I was like, wow, you know what I mean? But I'm I was supposed to be on that, low key. I was supposed yeah. to be on um Michael Jackson album. Wow. You know, things happen. Wow. You know. Yep. <laughs> I mean <laughs> and no uh, and, and me and Luther, we were supposed to get in, but then you know, he had got sick and everything. But a lot of things, you know, I'm yeah. just blessed, man. Like I did a song with Stevie, I sang on with him one time that he got in his vault. Wow. Stevie wanted, you know, just it's all fun, man. Like when you get to really hang out and work with these people, it's fun. But you know, yeah. you gotta be prepared though. You gotta be up for the task and everything, you know? Like, yeah. like, when, like when I work with Babyface, I was like, man, I can't let him, I can't have him in here bodying me. I gotta be, I gotta be on point. Right. You gotta have that mentality, cause it's real. Mm -hmm. Like, when they in the studio, they don't. You can't be a bum in the studio. Like, it doesn't matter who in there. You gotta be on point. Cause I mean, yeah, cause sideways. It's competitive, man. If you're no, not it ready, is. Like, be the next, it's, it's real. Be the next like, they, they look at you sideways. You can't be in the studio with these people. Like out of pocket, you gotta, you know, you gotta get it done. You gotta earn your yep. stripes. So you know, for real. <laughs> That's what it really. Is. It's like it is like a sport for real. Yeah, it is. So, lastly, Mike, before we get out of here, you know, I gotta see you back in the studio with Brandy. Like I said, you guys have such an amazing chemistry. Can we see that happen again soon? Hey, I, maybe I'll give her a call. We, if, if we, if we get in, I'm sure it'd be interesting. And I will say this though, we were supposed to get in last year. I had to get mm -hmm. some stuff um, done to my studio when all the yeah. rain was stuff was going on. But we definitely had talked about getting in and everything. And she was like, yo, I know me and you now. What what is that? What is that like? I was like, it got to be crazy, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> it's all a part of the journey, man. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's just, it's just fun and just being able to do music and everything. And I'm glad I can still do. I'm glad I can still do music that I want to do. Like, I never had yeah. to do nothing if i do something else it's because i want to do it like if i do a trap beat i want to do a trap beat not because mm -hmm. i gotta do you know what i'm saying so that's a blessing yeah i mean once you get to that level where you can just do whatever you want you don't have to conform it's just you your creativity with no one telling you what to do like that's an amazing thing and i mean mike we're out of time here but i gotta thank you for your r&b contributions what you've done for the game what you've done for us as as fans and man okay. like one thing i'll say about you is like mike city when i see that name the first thing that comes to mind is quality so keep that up you got, we, we're definitely it. gonna support and uh you know just keep us posted and thank y'all for for really pushing the culture forward and everything it's much absolutely. appreciated much needed thank you absolutely you take care and we'll talk again soon all right be good all right take care yeah.